Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Today's podcast is taken from the Traveling to Consciousness podcast, hosted by Clayton Cutery, who's interviewing Rachel Fiore about her re- recent news on becoming a presidential candidate. I hope you enjoy. A lot of times people are asking me who's the president of the party, and I can't really tell them, like, ah, it's coming soon, but you've officially put it out there that you're running for president. Um, yes. and we're going to get into that, but I feel like there's a couple notes I have here um, just for the audience sake, for our sake, so we can kind of just set the tone to this appropriately. And I know that we're both big advocates of transparency. Yes. And so let's at least start that off on this sake, right? So I know historically speaking, a lot of my podcasts have been more conversation based. Let's get to know each other. Let me see your ideas. I'll give you some of mine. So for me, at least, this is a little bit of a new rule where I'm stepping into the shoes of an interviewer, of a reporter, essentially, and just trying to pick your brain. Now, where there's some overlap here and where there's a potentiality for bias, right, is that we're both running in the same political party. We've had immense conversations about how we're going to save nature, how we're going to save the planet. So I just want to at least bring those up as an asterisk so that people are you know, have their wits about them, right? Because we want to make sure that um, they know that I'm at least coming from a place that may be a little bit biased as opposed to someone who may be outside of the realm. So I just feel like those transparency notes are important. So with all of that being said, first of all, congratulations on officially announcing. Thank you. Um, Is there anything you want to say on those notes before we get into the interview and a deeper discussion? Um, just to piggyback a little bit that, you know, Clayton and I are both a part of the American Congress party. So keep that in mind. And even though we are here to do great, wonderful things, save this planet, elevate humanity, um, of course, there's some degree of, of bias and we just want everybody to be open-minded as we try to be with everybody else. We walk our talk. So, um, but yes, absolutely. Full transparency. And let's just dive in and see where we go. Beautiful. And if I see any, any area for me to push back, I'll, (laughs) I'll do it because we like some, some controversy to make some good, uh, for good uh, entertainment. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. And Clayton is very good at being able to ask questions that he feels represents, um, what people want to know about, by the way, it isn't like, you know, just a bias. Let's try to tell people what they want to hear. I don't come from that place ever. You'll find out probably the more you listen to this particular episode. Um, But Clayton doesn't come from that place either. So um, I appreciate that you'll ask questions and give some pushback on certain things because I think people need to hear that. So thank you in advance. Well, thank you. I appreciate that because I know, I know at least with my conversations, as we're getting into a conversation here, (laughs) (laughs) I always try to take that perspective of like, what are people generically saying? So as a, at an interview level, that's probably a good, a good angle. And, and I also took notes. I actually wrote down, I, I take notes all the time for my guests, but I don't usually have them sitting in front of me whenever I'm doing this. So let's see how that also plays into that. But, but with all that being said, let's jump into trying to develop yes. a little bit more of an interviewee, interviewer uh, energy here. Uh, so Real Fiore, <laughs> why are you running for president of the United States in the first place? Ah, uh, yeah, let's start there. Talk about transparency. Um, I was asked and I answered the call. That's the simplest answer that I can give. I want to make very clear that this is not like this has been a lifelong dream. Um, I haven't planned on doing this. It was a bit of a surprise, to be perfectly honest. Um, before I continue specifically with that, why I'm running for president, I want to give a little bit of a background that I've spent my entire life elevating, coaching, guiding, leading people 
in so many types of scenarios. I've always played a leadership role from the time I was very, very young. Um, when I coach people, help people, support people, guide people, um, as a spiritual teacher, and we can get into that later so people are clear on that, um, I am here to help elevate humanity, period. And that means raise the level of consciousness of human beings. That means to get out of your suffering. And how do you do that? Well, that's everything that I teach. It's everything that I, I coach and I teach people how to do it. It also means to dismantle that which creates and causes your suffering, whether that is being created by you yourself because of the unhealed wounds and the programs that you run, that's an individual thing, and or it is a societal thing or a systemic thing. How do we dismantle what is creating the enslavement, the struggle to barely survive versus thrive in our own individual life and relationships and in this country and in this world? I have already been doing that at a mastery level for years and years and years. So although I was shocked when I was asked to join the American Congress, not, I wasn't shocked to, to join the American Congress party. I was shocked when I was asked to run for president and I had to process that a little bit. And I felt like it was just my soul saying, this is take it to the next level. You know, I've mastered everything else that I do and that I offer people. This is now offering this level of enlightenment, elevation, free from suffering, free from the enslavement that we all experience here at a whole nother level, at a larger level. And it's a way to help the most people at one time. Because of that, and only because of that, did I then realize I need to answer this call and that answer is yes. That's beautiful. And you mentioned a couple times in there about being a spiritual teacher, a lot of your language is very, it seems similar with the spiritual community. In this, in my endeavor with my podcast, Traveling to Consciousness, I've met so many spiritual people. And it seems to me anytime the idea of politics has come up, it's either, you know, spiritual people don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Or, you know, I've even had so much as one um, renunciant, if you will, you know, came on and basically said that it's a, a dirty arena for other people you know, insinuating that they're not spiritual. Yeah. Um, so like, what's going on here? Why is it that you feel being a spiritual person? Like, mm -hmm. do you know why people think that way? And then are you like, what's, what's even going on there? Like, is it, are you not being spiritual by actually running for president? Like, is that a fair thing to say? Oh, it's like a beautiful, I love that question, actually. Um, I think that if we are not the leaders that help guide other people to free them from suffering and free them from the enslavement that we've been experiencing and free them from their own darkness and shadow self and the darkness on the planet. That is the epitome of what it means to be spiritual. If we are not doing that, we cannot claim to be spiritual people. We are just as unconscious as anybody and everybody else. If you're not a leader, when you achieve a certain degree of enlightenment and awakening and you've expanded your level of consciousness, with that comes great responsibility naturally, right? The very first way of oneness, consciousness of the universal ways of oneness is the way of responsibility. So with that comes great responsibility the more you awaken. Why? Because if you don't yet know how to awaken and become a higher level of consciousness, which means integrity, trust, truth, you know, loyalty, harmlessness, and gentleness with each other, for this planet, if you don't yet know how to do that and become that yourself, but I do, why would I keep that to myself? It doesn't make any sense. The people who are in positions of power, a lot of them are not leaders. Just because you hold a position of power doesn't mean you're a leader. That doesn't make you a leader. People who have high levels of consciousness, they are supposed to be the ones who lead us because they lead us to freedom. They don't lead us towards greed, materialism, destruction of each other and the planet. That's not a leader. Those people are not leaders. So to be perfectly honest, part of the brainwashing in our world, in this country, in society, is that spiritual people have nothing to do with leading or politics. It's the opposite of that. We should be the ones 
infiltrating government in order to make a government that is enlightened actually for the people by the people. That's what it's supposed to be. It's not that at all right now. It is so far off into the darkness that it almost looks like it's impossible to come back. But the only way to transform that is for enlightened people to bring their light, their wisdom inside of the government and transform that darkness from the inside out. That is the job of a spiritual person and the responsibility. There's a lot of imagery in that answer. So I was seeing a lot of different stuff kind of going on there. One of the predominant things was is this idea maybe of darkness in politics and enlightening it as you would, as you were saying. What, how would you describe maybe in an abstract way, maybe as like a spiritual person, how would you describe the texture, the color, the, the feeling of government now and how you believe it should be in an enlightened way? I think that what you feel from our government now, you can feel the betrayal, you can feel the lies, you can feel the corruption, you can feel how fake, like the masks that they wear, they, they present something to the people, none of it's true or very little of it is. Um, the level of manipulation, all of it feels like you are in a horribly abusive relationship with a narcissistic abuser and you need to learn how to stand up for yourself and break up and get the hell out and get to safety. That's what it currently feels like. And we need to, we the people need to connect to our inner power and break up with the narcissistic abuser that's abusing us. It's that simple. When they are stealing the amount of money that they're stealing, taxing times uh, everything a hundred times over, there is not a lot that they are doing in any way, shape or form that actually benefits people in this country. And we either keep falling for it, keep being manipulated, keep being brainwashed or keep remaining in powerlessness saying, well, what are we going to do? I'm only one person. Oh, we have the power in our hands when we come together and unite in oneness. Oneness consciousness means we come together collectively for the benefit of all of us as well as each individual. Both are true. It is not one or the other. This whole greed and materialism and corruption in, in politics and in our government needs to go. And that's only going to happen when we learn how to come together in union, in unity for the best interest of all of us so that we all thrive. That old system of hierarchy of just me, I'm the only one who can win here is disgusting and it's dysfunctional. And that's the narcissistic abuser. And we need to break up with our government. We need to break up and we need to start new relationships with us that are based on harmony, enlightenment, growth mindset, that we all continue to grow and elevate and become better human beings. That's the kind of government I want I want those types of people in leadership roles. That's who I entrust with my well-being. Anybody who's in there now, I don't trust you with my well-being. Yeah, that's so true on many levels. And, and in that answer, you were talking about how it's very corrupt. We have a very bad relationship. I love that breaking up relationship idea with the government. But it is. Hopefully so, maybe not. I'm seeing it interesting how it's dark. It's, uh, you know, it's very corrupt. And then, you know, when you're saying like we need to go in, infiltrate a spiritual people to correct it. I'm also having this other idea come up of how you're like the five people you hang out with the most. You know, you become mm -hmm. attuned to them frequently, energetically, right? Yep. So how can you be confident or how can you know that if elected, when elected, you wouldn't, that corruption and evil wouldn't become a part of who you are? How do you oh, know I that you would be this. the one who heals it? This is such an amazing question. You you asked the best questions. Um, that that right there is is a key question. Um, it is such a key question because let me say this first. I do believe that there is a very small percentage of people in our government who went in there and are in there with the best of intentions. I think there's a few of them. I don't think there's too many, unfortunately. And I'm not saying that in judgment. That's just what I see. And um, I do think that there is a small percentage of people that that's exactly what happened to them. They go in 
with all of the best intentions in the world, um, they really want to make real change. They really are trying to serve the pe the American people and and do everything on behalf of the American people. And I think they get swallowed up. I think they absolutely get swallowed up because there's too many of them, quote unquote, um, that are lost in the sauce and just earning the greedy paycheck and all the payouts that the corporations give them. I think they don't know what to do. They feel powerless to a degree. Like they can't make enough of a difference because it's just me here. It's just three of us or a tiny percentage. Mm. So I do, I have seen that happen or what I think and believe is what happens to a lot of people. I think here's the difference and it's two main things. The biggest difference is the people with the good, just because you have good intentions doesn't mean you have the power to do what you would like to do. And that power comes from an internal awakening where you have an energetic power where somebody so evil, so corrupt, so hateful that is willing to dehumanize other people and use them and, and think of them as slaves. That person in front of you cannot shake me or rattle me. The work needs to be done first from the inside out on the individual level. And so part of transforming the corruption and the darkness in our government and the evil in our government is doing the work yourself first. That is critical. Otherwise, you are just going to get swallowed up because there is a lot of darkness that is in our, that's running our country, right? In order to not get swallowed up by that, you had to have done enough of the inner work on yourself to where you now function in your divine power that you are an enlightened being, that you are on the road to enlightenment. So you are, ener this is all energetics. You are energetically powerful enough that when you walk into the room, your energy is what starts to transform the darkness in the room. You are now the threat, so to speak, and I don't mean that in a negative way, <laughs> but you are now the threat to the darkness because you're bringing your light. If people have not yet done that, they will get swallowed up. And I'm going to give a real simple analogy again. If you were, I'm going to use the abusive relationship. If you were truly abused in a horrific relationship and you got the courage and you got the support to break up and leave that relationship, and then sometime later you just met someone new and you entered into another relationship, you did not do the real work on yourself to heal, to elevate, to become powerful enough to never again get into that same type or similar type of relationship. You don't just hope for a better person. You have to become powerful enough so that you never lower the bar on yourself and you never again accept anything less than you deserve. And that is what we need to do as we the people, all of the citizens of this country, we need the education, the tools to elevate our consciousness, connect to our power and not tolerate that low bar where we are dehumanized and abused anymore. That is the key difference. That's beautiful. And, and I think there's, there's a lot of things coming up. There's definitely some policy in there. Yes. But one thing, because one thing I want to kind of point out here, ask you about, is kind of getting these things, right? Because I feel like even if you have all of your policies, if we have all this darkness and corruption in place, then it doesn't, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be almost impossible for you to get things passed, right? Because right. you also need a legislative branch. Yes. So what, so one thing you mentioned in there, right, is like working with people, right? And it, you mentioned how it needs three, it needs five, we need a certain amount of people. Yep. If we look at government right now, right, there are a few people, but I, I can't, you know, of the, 535 people in Congress, uh, for, to my knowledge, and I don't know everybody, to my knowledge, maybe there's 10, maybe there's 15 who I'd be like, oh, yeah, like I trust that person. Yeah. So with that being said, right, you get in, you have this, you know, this fire, this enlightenment, and you want to share that with Congress. How can we get, is there a way to get those congressmen, those congresswomen to work with you? How, how do you get them to actually propose legislation that you would desire to make the world a better place? How, because in my mind, it might be very difficult to do that. So what is yeah. your vision for that? 
Yeah, that's beautiful. So it, it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely <laughs> difficult. Um, I will never pretend that something like this is going to be easy. And the biggest transformations and the most incredible things in our history that have ever happened have never come easy. So let me make that clear. I know it's not going to be easy at all. I don't pretend it's going to be. However, there's two things because you mentioned policies. Yes, we need to change certain policies. Absolutely. But I need everybody listening to understand something. If that is all we did, nothing would ever change. In the long run, nothing would ever change because someone else would just come back and pull some bullshit, corrupt policies that make more humans suffer in this country at some point later. Like we don't want the yo-yo game anymore. We don't want any of that to happen anymore. So although changing some of the policies are, it's important to do that also as well. In addition to that does not solve the core problem that we have in our government right now, right? So education, education, education. These people are going, I am not here to do things the old way. <laughs> so this is probably a good segue to throw this out there. All we see is people doing things the same exact way that it's always been done. Hey, I promise this, and then I get in there, nothing's done. Our country goes to shit even worse than it did four years prior. And we fight over it and act like it doesn't and act like it did. All of that nonsense needs to stop. It isn't, that we can't keep doing the same thing every four years thinking anything is gonna change. It's ridiculous. It's like you're still driving on your old transmission and you don't get it, you don't, you need a new transmission. Get rid of the transmission. Yours is shot. Stop trying to fix it up and tune it up and then keep driving the same car. Take the transmission out of the car. It's done. Take it to the junkyard. So guess what? Everybody in government, they're going to start to get educated on what it means and how hard it is to transform ourselves from the inside out and become new human beings, better human beings, more elevated human beings that function in harmony with all things, the earth, with all beings with ourselves as a whole, no more separation. They're gonna be educated. I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not gonna like it, but the education is going to be a requirement and I am going to teach them. And if it's so abrasive to them that they don't wanna learn what it means and become good, amazing human beings, because we should settle for nothing less than that. If they don't wanna become that, it's going to be so abrasive to them, they're gonna leave. They're going to quit. And guess what? I'm going to give a report card. I will give a report card to the entire country who wants to continue to be an evil, corrupt asshole in our government who refuses to become a better human being and choose better for all of us for themselves as an individual and who is actually healing, elevating and becoming better human beings. The Amer Talk about transparency. The American people, they're going to get a report card on how everybody is doing. They're going to get a report card on who's showing up and acting like the assholes, the narcissistic abusers of the group. They're going to be called out. I am going to let all the American people see what really goes on in government. Talk about transparency. That's the biggest difference. And if the people in government, hey, people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing, don't they? So let's expose it all. Let's be transparent for real. And if you really don't like it, leave and we'll elect someone new to take your place that is willing to transform this country into an amazing enlightened society because that's what i'm here to do that's so cool i love that idea because i not only does that bring in transparency but it also brings in accountability and responsibility because that's lacking in every single leadership position yes so what can you dive into this a bit more because i don't think we've ever even discussed this i've never even heard about this this idea of creating a report card for everybody in Congress. Um, like, what, is, what does that look like? What's, what are they going to be graded on? How are you going to grade them? I mean, and I mean, even just to give my opinion here for a second, it seems overdue because there overdue. is no one to hold them accountable. Exactly. They're, it, it's almost they're being reprimanded, which I think the American people would want. At least that's what I would want. It's like you're not living up to your oath of office. I mean, we can go yes. down the list, but – and so what is, I mean, wow, what does this report card look like? What are we putting on it? How are they graded? Give yeah. me some, give me some more information on this. 
Yeah, sure. So I base everything that I do, everything that I teach and the standards that I uphold for myself, I base those on the 20 universal ways of oneness. There are 20 ways of oneness. These are enlightened vibrational frequencies for us to become and achieve ourselves. The oneness consciousness is what heals, number one, the individual. So my life, my relationships, my suffering, my unhealed traumas, my pain, whatever I'm suffering from as an individual, when you learn how to work with the ways of oneness and become them, you learn how to heal ab absolutely everything in your life. So that is no difference in the group mindset. When we're talking about a whole group of people, how to become an in actual enlightened society and what that means, we need education on what that really means and giving a quick synopsis here, you know, for the sake of time. Um, but the 20 ways of oneness, and I'm just gonna mention them very quickly, okay? Um, 20 ways, the first one is the way of responsibility, the way of patience, the way of surrender. Number four, the way of truth, the way of presence, connection, compassion, harmlessness and gentleness. The way of equality is number nine out of 20. The way of trust, imagine if we could trust our government. The way of honoring, how to honor one another instead of tear each other apart or continue with our misogynistic, racist, et cetera, ways, our prejudice ways. The way of honoring, the way of selfless service. If we are in government, we should be selflessly serving the people that we are supposed to be representing. The way of loyalty, that we uphold that level of selfless service and responsibility in every previous way of oneness. The way of unconditional love, the way of humility. Boy, are we lacking that with a lot of people in government the way of integrity, the way of integrity. What does that even mean in our government? I don't know if, if hardly anybody in our government knows what integrity actually is, let alone makes themselves a representative of what the way of integrity means. The way of forgiveness, the way of purity, the way of wisdom, and the way of harmony. Those are the 20 ways. And when we learn and educate what that looks like, what it sounds like, what that is like, Every policy that is ever written should be based on the 20 universal ways of oneness. If it lacks equality, it shouldn't even be up for a vote. Hmm. If it lacks the ways of oneness, why are we like heathens, barbaric monsters voting on something that shouldn't even make it to, it shouldn't even be put in front of us, let alone have people voting like you're, like your opinion matters when you're removing the rights away from someone else. Why are we even voting on some of these things? This is how psychotic and out of control our government has gotten. If you are basing everything on the ways of oneness, all 20 of them, not two of them, all 20, then all of our policies cannot lack any of these ways, which means, oh, look at this policy. You're trying to enslave women and remove their rights more. Well, that lacks the way of equality. That lacks the way of trust. That lacks the way of harmlessness and gentleness. Put it in the trash, burn it. It doesn't even make it to the floor. That's the kind of change that I'm looking for. And that's what I'm going to implement in our government. That's what I'm going to implement. If people don't like it and they fight against that, it shows you the type of person they actually are. Why would anybody vote for them ever again? Get them out of government. So I want to, I, I, I love everything you had to say there, but I wanted to bring it back to the report card. So are people being graded on, they'll get a grade for each way of oneness? Is Absolutely. That the idea? Okay. Absolutely. I wanted to solidify that. Yes. And I'm looking forward to a report card of like for each congressperson. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. And, and do you find that that might, we might be getting a little bit too much in the weeds of this, but I'm just thinking we have 535 people in Congress. Do you feel like that would take up a lot of your time to actually sit down and systematically do? Because as president, you're going to have a lot of stuff on your plate. So how does that fit into everything else that's going to be going on as president? Yeah, good question. Yes, there's going to be a lot of things on my plate. This is going to take a lot of time. Here's the thing. I am tired of people that are supposed to represent us not putting top priorities that matter, that will alleviate our suffering, our enslavement, that will not, um, that will resolve our problems with homelessness and poisoning our food and all of those things. 
I'm tired of this not being top priorities, okay? The condition, our mental health, our emotional health, our spiritual health, and our physical health, that should be number one, period, end. So reprioritizing the things that typically go on in government, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reprioritize because I want the American people to know you can live healthy, you can live free, you do not have to struggle with mental illness, emotional illness, you don't have to struggle with a lot of the physical illnesses that you have that are based on the very food system that our government chooses to poison you with. Those are my priorities. So think about this. When we have a, a decision to make on whether we're going to ban you know, pesticides or herbicides and stop poisoning the American people, guess what? It's not a decision. Poisoning people is not an alignment with an elevated enlightened being. You just would never do that. It doesn't fall under the category of the 20 universal ways of oneness, harmlessness and gentleness, trust. Those are two ways of oneness. So no, we don't vote on whether we poison people or not. We stop poisoning people. You see how simple this is? Part of what Congress, our government has turned into is to make things so insanely overly complicated. So guess why? the average American and spiritual people, truly awakened people on the planet, don't wanna go anywhere near politics. They don't wanna to touch it with a 10 foot pole. And part of that has been done by design. Guess what? We don't have to have things this complicated. We can simplify it. We can simplify it. We can make it where, does this, does this fall in alignment with the ways of oneness? Yes or no? No, well then trash it, burn it. It is no longer a part of how we do business around here. It's cool. It's cool that you have like this template already. I mean, you keep bringing up the 20 ways of oneness. So you almost already have this template to measure up any sort of policy or legislation. Cause I'm seeing like, cause I feel like, especially if you're going to be the leader of the free world, which is an interesting phrase, which is we'll ironic. Get, yeah. We'll get, <laughs> just realize that's a very interesting phrase. I haven't uh -huh. used it in a while. <laughs> um, but if, if you're the leader, let's say of the United States of America, a lot of unexpected things are going to come up, right? Yep. Things that you can't plan for. And yep. so that's amazing that you have kind of this blueprint already put up to measure things against. And I think that's probably something even just like a generic like ethos, if you will, of every generic person should probably have that. And it's got me thinking yes. that I should might need one of those too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if we dive a little bit, let's dive a little bit more into like policy, because I know I saw on your website, uh, rachelfiori24.com, um, that there was a few policies. And I mean, I don't know how much we're going to get in today. I think before we started recording, we said we we're going to have to do more of these before yeah. the election. Uh, but, you know, the one that we should probably start off with was because I saw your master's in occupational therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also on your policy section started talking about healthcare versus sick care. Yep. And I have a feeling this is also somehow tied into education because you put on your website also free education a master's in occupational therapy. Um, what is your, first of all, what do you mean by healthcare versus sick care? And how does this lead us to free medication? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So I first want to mention that when I, so after I earned my master's degree and I became a licensed therapist, I was working in our healthcare system and I went on to quotes. specialize. For yeah, listening, she did air quotes. <laughs> yes, definitely air quotes there. Um, our so-called healthcare system. And I went on to specialize in a couple different fields. One of them was I specialized in mental, emotional, and behavioral health. And while I was working in hospital systems and our, you know, quote unquote healthcare system, I was shocked and devastated at what I saw behind the scenes. It was such a rude awakening for me to see that it isn't healthcare at all in any way, shape or form. We do nothing to find the root cause of a problem and cure what is happening with a person when they are struggling, whether that's, you know, mental, emotional illness, or whether it's something physical, physical disease or illness, we just treat symptoms because as we all know, the farm, or I did not know at the time, as I know now, and I know many people know now, that the pharmaceutical industry just runs and controls even medical schools, but they are in charge of our healthcare system. So all they want are people to be sick, right? So when I was 
still working in that system, I will never forget the day that I was told to stop healing people because sick people make us money. And I will, I don't think I could ever forget. I went numb and I just thought, this is what I've worked so hard and my level of education and training and specializing for to be a part of this type of system. That is not the way of integrity. That is not the way of trust or truth or harmlessness and gentle. It does not fall under the category of anything but evil and corrupt. And here I was a part of that system, you know, unknowingly when I entered into it. And so I knew that I was there for a reason. It was for me to learn what really goes on behind the scenes so that I could transform it and do something different, you know. Um, so knowing that, when I saw that behind the scenes, um, people are not, they're brainwashed. They're not educated in how to care for themselves. The fact that we are poisoned in every way, shape or form in this country. And they don't know how to actually heal themselves and get themselves out of a sick care system. And they're not going to know from the very system that oppresses you, your oppressors are not gonna set you free. They're going to continue to oppress you. How do you get oppressors to stop oppressing people? The people who are being oppressed rise up. And how are we gonna get those people to rise up in this country? is free education, free education on every level. Everybody can do something to heal themselves, to become whole, to stop suffering. You just have to be willing to learn and be willing to take action with what you're given when we teach it to you, right? You, you still have free will choice, but that is one of the biggest things that I'm gonna do when I am president is I am going to educate the American people. We are gonna set up systems where everybody has access, how to heal yourself, how to, at least to some small degree, grow your own food so that the food industry is gonna lose enough money where it either collapses or they're forced to change and stop poisoning the American people. Not to mention, I think the people in our government who actually poison us should be brought to justice. That's a different topic. Well, let's jump into that topic. What what type of justice do you believe? Like what court of law or the like a certain laws you're look you you think for them or like what what's your opinion of bringing uh those who have poisoned Americans? How how do you investigate that? How do you prosecute that? Yeah, I think anybody who actually votes for pesticides and herbicides to con and poisons to continue to be in our food they allow corporations to put poison, read the ingredients, everybody, read the ingredients. They allow corporations to poison food and sell it pretending like it's food. If anybody in government has not voted against or removed it, they should be prosecuted. Because here's the truth. If I suddenly started, um, you know, putting arsenic or some poison in my husband's food and slowly poisoned him over time. And he started getting sick and having all these symptoms and going to the hospital or the emergency room. I would be prosecuted probably with attempted murder. Why are we not holding the people in our government accountable like that? Why is there a double standard? Why can you cause such harm to these people in this country and make them sick and make them suffer? And none of you are being prosecuted to the fullest extent. Absolutely not. It is unacceptable. So I, I believe that we need to start prosecuting people in government who actually allow us to be poisoned. I'm all on board with that. I think the, the big thing would be is that we've seen time and time again, where most recent would be Hunter Biden with his whole laptop thing. Yep. But we've seen time and time again, where politicians have weaseled their way out of any sort of, uh, what accountability accountability yes there's absolutely no accountability for them yep. i think there was even a judge who claimed that joe biden wasn't mentally fit enough to stand trial which is <laughs> crazy that this is the country you live in yep. so it seems as though this is almost even a, an issue that is even more deeper than just one president could take on so or do you think that you could pull this off as a president and if so how I am not just one person. We are an entire country here banding together. That's the difference. 
That is the difference. So when you couple this with all of the layers that will make real change actually happen, and that is educating the American people, and that is teaching them what not to eat and why. You still have free will choice. You can still go buy it and eat it if you want to. This isn't about controlling anybody. It's about setting people free. But teaching people what is in our food and blasting that out to the entire country and teaching them why you should not eat this or that and what poisons are in this, that, and that and why you should stay away from them and teaching them how in their own little kitchens, how to start growing things for themselves. So many products are available for us now to do this very cheaply, very easily. So we can make a big difference with all of these layers being offered and taught to the American people, we can make massive change happen. And then guess what? If we can't prosecute and we can't hold people accountable because the court systems are way too corrupt still for that, it might take time to make all of this happen. I understand that. But if we hit it from more than one angle and we hit it from every direction humanly possible, they will be forced to make change. And when time comes to rerun, who's gonna vote for them? We're gonna put term limits on. We need to get people out of there, right? We have to hit it from so many angles and that's part of what we need to go into this as a community who are willing to fight for our health and our freedom. And when I say fight, I'm not talking about violence. I'm saying hit them where it hurts, which is money. Stop buying certain products, start growing your own food and having the plans and the education and the teachings to teach you exactly how to do that in your own com uh, communities so that we are not reliant upon our government to the degree that we are now, like slaves are. We're not reliant on them to that degree anymore. We remove that from the government, we've removed their power. Hmm. That'd be a nice vision. It's a nice vision. <laughs> it's a nice um, vision. It's a nice vision, one day. Um, and, and I'm kind of getting this intuitive thought because I feel like there's a lot here and I think there's a lot of your policies that seem very different and out of the box compared to what I've heard a lot of people talking about and there's a piece of me that we'll get into it more in more depths it seems like but right now I'm feeling like we should talk about something I think that we've never talked about before and it seems to also be a hot button issue at this point so it's mm -hmm. probably worth at least exploring which would be the idea of immigration so mm -hmm. we've seen a dramatic policy shift from our past president, um, you know, Trump saying that we should build a wall, um, you know, people need to come in legally to Joe Biden's America, where his goal is just allow people to come in, no vetting, no checking. They can get plane tickets now. They're buying them plane tickets in. Um, he's now complaining that he doesn't have the authority of the military, which I don't know if he knows what the executive branch is, but <laughs> if you get into power, you will have that power to <laughs> order around the National Guard, order ICE. Um, and there's even an amazing thing. I, I learned this from Vivek Ramaswamy, where he was saying that uh, every police officer can actually act as an ICE agent uh, to deport people if needed. Um, they just have to be given that authority. But of course, you know, the politics, Joe Biden isn't going to do that. He's going to blame you know, Congress, we've seen this, we've seen this play so many times, you know, it's not surprising to me. Mm -hmm. So with the last, I don't know, with this being the last eight years of our immigration completely seeming to flow from side to side, where does Rachel Fiore say it's legal or illegal immigration? So where do you sit just maybe broadly on the idea of immigration, um, and then specifically legally and illegally? Um, so first, let me say that I honor this topic is so complicated that I think that everyone listening needs to have a level of emotional maturity, that there is no one flip of a switch that is going to heal and transform this easily, that we cannot keep doing, you know, um, don't let anybody in, get rid of all of them, let some people in. It isn't that easy. I want to make that very clear. This is a very, very complicated topic, and to implement anything is a very challenging decision and pursuit forward. So I want to honor how complicated it is. This is not easy. 
Okay. I don't care who anybody is in charge, whether get rid of the corrupt people. This is not an easy topic um, problem to solve for anybody. And I just want to honor that. Let me say this next. A long-term solution is the more humanity awakens and gets the education to raise the level of consciousness on the planet. People will hear me say that and just dismiss it and not listen any further. The problem with that is if we do not focus on raising the level of consciousness on the planet, then violence will continue and war will continue forever. It just will because only people who function at low levels of consciousness cause harm. Only people at very low level of levels of consciousness rape, murder, punch women in the street for no reason. Like these are people, low levels of consciousness. If we were elevated human beings, that wouldn't even happen. It can't occur when you're a more elevated evolved being. That's the problem. The core of the problem isn't about keeping people in, keeping people out. That isn't going to solve the long-term problem of people being evil and violent. We have to solve the problem of people being evil and violent and the core root cause of people being violent and doing what they do. That's the biggest question. The biggest question is not about short-term policy solutions that don't solve anything because the next president comes and switches it and just changes everything like I mentioned earlier. We have to go deeper. We have to be willing to address problems at the root cause. And that means addressing violence at the root cause. Because here's the truth. Let's think about this in a very simple way. If I were to invite people over to my house to hang out, would I invite and welcome with open arms violent criminals who once they got here were going to steal from me, murder me, rape me, you know, harm me, beat me up, you know, trash my place? Or would I want people of any ethnicity of any background, I welcome you with open arms when you are a good human who is just here to connect and have a good time together and, and connect on a deeper level. I'm not afraid you're going to harm me. That's how we have to think of these things. What we see in the macro on that, on that even global scale is a reflection of what we have yet to heal within ourselves as individuals and we see it in extreme ways in the macro because we have yet to take responsibility for ourselves on, on the micro, on an individual level, right? So we have to have short-term and long-term solutions both. And that is why where I come in, I'm doing things very, very differently. You cannot have just short-term solutions. It will never heal the root cause of the problem. You have to have short-term and long-term implementation of healing the root cause of these things, okay? If we can understand that and raise our level of consciousness and understand short-term and long-term things need to be put in place, then a short-term solution, part of a short-term solution is people are not the way of trust, the way of harmlessness and gentleness yet in order to let them freely roam wherever they want to roam. And bringing people in, we have already seen the problems that it is causing and the continuation of violence, of people being harmed, of men violating women who have come over. And it isn't about classifying one group of people. It is about understanding the harm that we open up people to when we are not more responsible. The first way of oneness is the way of responsibility. If people at this level of consciousness, who God knows how many percentage of people from anywhere on the planet, including in our own country, cannot be vetted, that they cannot cause violence and harm, we have to do a better job at vetting people in order to make it safe. No different than me opening my house to people. If I think there's any chance of you causing me harm, guess what? You're not invited. You don't get to come onto my property. Like, that, like, think about that in the simplest way. But if I vet you and I trust you enough to come on in and have an invitation to dinner, come on, let's have dinner and we'll hang out all night long and get to know each other. I welcome you with open arms. I want people to start to think about what they would allow coming into their own home 
and what they wouldn't allow come into their own home. That's where we need to start. That's where we need to start while we then implement the education and all of the, the ways that we need to raise and levels of consciousness, which means we need to heal the violence and the corruption from the inside out. And that's including the individual level in humans. Wow. How? <laughs> it seems like there's a big piece here. Uh, the two biggest pieces are raising the level of our consciousness yes. and education. Yes. So maybe it's, so I'm very curious as how the, as the president, you would give that education piece, but even more so, it seems like at this point, at this point, it's very important to go into this idea of consciousness. So mm -hmm. when you say raise the level of consciousness, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Think about, um, for those listening, self-growth, healing, elevating yourself. Okay. So, and this is not something that I can summarize in, in, in two minutes. There is so much that goes into this. I've spent my entire life creating the education and the programs and the structure that people need in order to elevate. It's what I already do. Okay. So I'm going to make that clear to everybody listening. Um, you teach people exactly where their dysfunction is. What are their programs that they are running that create behavioral programs of attack? whether it's verbal attack, psychological t attack, you know, whether it's hate, whether it's prejudices, whether it's sexism, what programs are you running? There needs to be a mass level of education. What programs am I running right now? That means mental programs, emotional programs, behavioral programs, and inner child wounds. We all run programs, unconscious, unenlightened people lack self-awareness. So it is first teaching people how to gain a level of self-awareness of, here's where my mind goes. My mind hates that person. My mind thinks this. All of the mental programs that create anger, rage, attack, violence, you know, hate, whatever it is, we have to become more self-aware. And once you're aware of the mental programs, and then that activates the emotional programs of you know, I gave a couple examples, anger, rage, you know, frustration or hate or whatever it is, you become aware of that. And then you energetically, because we are energetic beings, you learn how to energetically heal that within yourself. So it doesn't exist. You are literally creating you as a human being, a peaceful, powerful human that then cannot be brainwashed or controlled and manipulated by others. That's the key. The more conscious you are, the more acutely self-aware you are, and self-awareness isn't, isn't the end, it's not the goal, it is the beginning of how do I heal myself so I am not triggered, I am not reactionary, that I do take accountability for myself and my poor choices or poor actions. It's owning who I am as a being and realizing that I'm powerful enough to heal, become peaceful. Peaceful does not mean passive. It means powerful. It means non-reactionary. That is the level of education that we need, and we need to start in a massive scale. And when people realize they have the power to heal in that way, you literally cannot be brainwashed anymore by a corrupt government. You cannot be made into a slave. It sets you free mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even physically. So that's where we need to start. That education needs to be offered to everybody, everybody, starting immediately. <laughs> yesterday, starting yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> so with this education piece, right, because I think I saw this on your policy section as well, it was under free education. There's, you're only one person, all right? Yes. You're the president. So how, and then we have all these other educators and who are doing an amazing job, first of all, but at some level, they're not taught how to teach these things. Right. So how, how do we have that? Like you can't, I, I mean, in my opinion, in my opinion, we can't just say to our current public educators, oh, teach, let's say the ways of oneness, teach meditation, teach mindfulness, because they need education themselves to get exactly. to that point. So how, how do we educate 300 million people into, yeah. you know, let's say um, we've been calling it indigo education. I guess you're calling it ways of oneness. 
how do we educate people into this way of being of upgrading our consciousness uh how, how does the that will enable us to have this sort of education for everybody yeah i think um on a very practical level we have to have a committee a team of people in order to strategically lay it out so that we can actually take action and make it start to happen so i think we need to have a team of people come together in a committee where we can actually start implementing this and rolling rolling it out to everybody in in the country everybody who wants it and is interested and wants to elevate in this way should have access to this so there's a level where we start there number two there has to be people who love this idea and want to be educated enough and trained enough themselves that they can be coaches and instructors in this so we have to find the people who think this is my soul's purpose. This is what I would love to help do and help transform this planet, help transform this country, humanity. And those people, I know there are a lot of them out there. Um, I already know a bunch of them. They're already currently doing this, right? So they already are currently doing this. We just need to expand it to a much larger scale so that everybody has access to this stuff, right? So. We begin with the people who are going to be the coaches, the instructors. They have to be educated. They have to up level first. No more inauthenticity where you lack training, you lack the skills, and then you call yourself a teacher, a coach, or whatever. We got to get rid of that crap. That's inexcusable. We can't do that. We need proper education, proper training, proper mentorship and apprenticeship to bring people up to elevate them enough where they can then teach everybody else, right? So that's part of it. Um, and then we figure out how can we offer this? We have the technology, we have social media, we have platforms where we can just offer education on a regular basis where anybody and everybody can tune in. We have to have at least a degree of this offered to everyone in the country to elevate them, to heal them to a degree that choose it. That's the other, that's the next level. And then the third, the third piece to this would be to actually start transforming schools, starting, you know, with elementary schools. I don't know how many schools that we would realistically be able to start with, um, but we need to start transforming schools with the people who are trained and educated in all of this and know how to teach uh, little ones in elementary school through high school, et cetera. We have to start opening schools where teachers who are highly conscious, properly trained and educated can then administer those things, those concepts to people at an age appropriate level. Think about this. If you are in kindergarten and you function with the basis of the universal ways of oneness, all it is at a kindergarten level is the way that you can cognitively understand it compared to somebody in high school compared to somebody in college, compared to somebody in fifth grade versus first grade. It's just implementing what does it mean to be the way of responsibility in kindergarten? Everybody should be learning these things. Everybody should be learning what is the way of integrity? What is the way of purity? It has nothing to do with religion. It is my pure intentions. How do I make sure that I am coming from a pure place, meaning not manipulation, not greed, not selfishness, that I'm actually coming from a pure place. Trust that you can trust me. These are the types of ethics that we should be teaching every American citizen and all of humanity, to be perfectly honest, that should just be offered. So we do it mass education across the whole country, free education. We do it with starting to transform schools and we do it with focusing on the people who want to be the leaders of this, who want to be the teacher of, the, of this. And we start training them and getting them in the programs right now in order to prepare them to take on these roles. I like that. I like that you can, you see that it's a bigger picture than just an immediate solution. It, yep. it, it does seem like something that would take some time to roll out. Yes. Um, and also I know that it's so funny. It feels like we've covered a lot, but not even scratched the surface of all the questions I have for, <laughs> let's say, the first president, uh, first female president of the United States. Um, but 
I guess here's the closing question I do want to ask you, because I think this is an amazing question. Uh, you get elected, you get sworn in January 20th. Um, I don't know, let's say it's probably around three or 4 p.m. You're sworn into office January 20th, 2025. And then what you have the next 24 hours, you're in the Oval Office. What are you doing for those first 24 hours that you're elected? Oh, good question. I have not even thought thought about that. Talk about transparency. See the way yeah. of truth. <laughs> Here's the way of truth for you. This is what it looks like, people, when somebody's actually honest. <laughs> this is what it looks like. <laughs> the way of humility. <laughs> I have not thought about that that 24 hours. I haven't even thought about it, to be perfectly honest. So I think since you asked me right now, let me just see if anything comes. What would I do in that first 24 hours? I think I would call for the country to come together um, and do a meditation of gratitude, of a spiritual revolution that we were successful in starting. And I would address the American people in okay, now here's where the real work really starts and it's all of us coming together. I think I would just address the American people and I would do it in a peaceful, loving way where we activate you know, those beautiful, meditative, energetic frequencies that allow people to feel what it feels like to come together in oneness. Energetically, like we can do this. We have a lot of work ahead of us, but it's us together. Um, and I think that's what I would focus on in that first 24 hours. Well, I know we're going to do more of these podcasts before November. So we'll, we'll use that as the intro to the next one of you updated what you're doing in your first 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll come back. We'll certify that. We'll, we'll lose the ability to step back and say, you don't know, because I think that's a big thing. And I guess I'm moving a little bit out of the interview where mode now because we're getting towards the end but that's a big thing i even realized is realizing how much stuff there is to learn in running for this yeah this position or i mean not your that position specifically but just running for government in general yeah how many issues there really are and it it seems like once you start peeling apart you realize how interconnected they all are so um i don't know there's a lot to tackle there but yeah we can definitely <laughs> the next time we have you on we'll definitely start off by asking what the first 24 hours are um see if anything <laughs> shifts there <laughs> Actually, it's probably me just, you know, getting a massage and relaxing because I know that I'll probably not get another day off for four years. So it might just be to take the day off. <laughs> <laughs> just enjoy it. <laughs> About her website, beautiful website, rachelfiori24.com. See how you guys can get involved. Uh, Rachel, with all that being said, is there, for people listening, you know, for spirituals, probably more so specifically spiritual people are listening. What like leaving parting advice do you have for them? Right. Because I guess, you know, the way I'm looking at this, um, if I were someone who has never heard of you before and I hear this podcast, you know, I'm thinking, okay, there's Trump, there's Biden, there's RFK. They seem like the three people mm -hmm. who are leading the way right now in all, you know, polls, which whether or not polls are accurate or not, different conversation. Um, but they seem to be the n top three. Why you? Why you? And I, I guess this is kind of like the parting use, but the parting words. But like, why are you? Um, how are you different? Why should people even consider voting for you over top of these other three? Um, because I'm not here to win you over and to make you like me. That's number one. It's not about my image. I don't care. I am not here to pretend to be something I'm not and to tell you what you want to hear in order to manipulate you and coerce you into voting for me with into a position, by the way, that sounds like the worst job in the world. Like if this does not sound like a fun, beautiful job where it's like, yay, I get to be president. It sounds awful. Again, it might be really jarring to hear somebody actually speak in truth for once when it comes to a political figure. But I say that in all sincerity, that 
this sounds like a terrible job to have. And that's what makes me right for the job, for the position, because I know that it is hard work. I'm not here to win you over. I'm here to start a spiritual revolution in order for us, the people, to come together. It isn't me. I am president. Sure, it's a role. There's a lot of responsibility, a lot of hard work that I myself will have to do. But it is us together. We should be running this country because it's supposed to represent us, the people. I'm the people. I am the people. I am you and you are me. And it is about time that we, the people, are the ones taking over government so that we can serve ourselves in a selfless, harmonious way. That is oneness consciousness. So I am you and you are me. The only other thing I will add to that is the three people that you mentioned, they're not willing to go in and dismantle our current government. I am because it's corrupt. People need to be held accountable and doing things the old way is never going to work. I am a disruptor and I, I know how to disrupt, uproot the darkness and then transform it into the light of divinity itself. I already do that in my life. I teach other people how to do it. I am the master of that. If we have anyone else going into that government, I guarantee you, you're going to see more of the same absolute bullshit. And the people that keep suffering are you. We have to be better and do different. I want us going in here together to make these changes happen. Rachel, very powerful words. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> it left me speechless. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Rachel, I appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Uh, I know you guys can check out the links to Rachel's social medias, which will be down in the description below. Um, yeah, this was great. Uh, do you have any parting words of wisdom for people? I mean, I guess that was pretty strong. Maybe we should just end it on that. <laughs> rise up. It's time to rise. It is time to rise. If we want change, we have to be the change. Rise. Join the revolution. This is for all of us. Join the revolution. Together we can make this happen. So let's go. Let's go. Very beautiful, Rachel. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for listening. And, you know, do what you guys got to do. Talk to people you got to talk to. And either way, I know that we'll all see each other in the sixth dimension. <laughs>